Okay, I'm going to start with the foundation of HTML and CSS and how those two work together to create a web page. I know we've reviewed this in the past, but it is the foundation for everything, so it always bears uh, framing our new information with this. HTML is the framework or the skeleton of the page. It is the portion of the code that says show a particular piece of information at a particular point. For example, show a paragraph or show a column or show a uh, show an image. And so it will it will give the framework of where to show that on the page as well as what the content is it, itself. And oftentimes CS uh, excuse me HTML looks like this. It has a paragraph tag opening and a paragraph cl uh, tag closing. It has perhaps a heading tag opening and closing, perhaps a div tag opening and closing. These are all elements found in the body of the page and it's the CSS portion of that page. So in terms of that particular piece, this again over here leads directly into the body of the page, right? The next thing that we have coming out of CSS is that, excuse me, coming out of HTML, it goes right into the CSS and once it comes into the CSS, it now shows us what these elements will look like. So just before we had an H1 tag being called in our HTML, well it's over in the CSS that it shows us that indeed that is what that H1 tag will look like. The CSS is saying anytime I see an H1 tag present it as a larger extra large font size, right? And then finally it's the combination of the HTML going into the CSS that brings us to our entire web page over here. And of course the important part to remember too here is that our CSS actually appears in the head of our um, web page. Now from a practical standpoint in terms of framing some of this out, the HTML will get framed out as you need certain elements in a page. If you need a paragraph, if you need a box, if you need uh, a a title or whatever but when you're setting up your CSS styles the concept here is that we really want to set them up so that they take advantage of the cascade and what we mean by that is we want to set up elements and attributes that apply to everything first and then work our way down into the smaller elements that we anticipate on the page so some of the things that I've written here are generally good strategies to set up in terms of developing our web page. We would want to set up universal selections on the entire page and I'm going to show you what that looks like when we actually get into code. But after universal selections I usually go ahead and set page properties and that will affect mostly the body tag. In there I'm going to set the base font, I'm going to set a few different things and in fact some of the things to know here is that when I'm setting any of these attributes, I can set um, across the board. If I'm setting these attributes, I can go ahead and set font, font color, font size, background, margin, padding, border. Um, generally speaking, when I'm looking at almost all of these attributes, whether it's a div, a class, a headline, for almost all of them, I can go ahead and set all of these particular attributes if I wanted to. Moving past the page properties, I can go into my headlines. Those are the H1 through 6 tags that we find in um, HTML. Div styles or div um, information is a new piece that's, that's in more modern design that I'm going to speak to you next, as are classes. Divs are basically boxes that have been set aside on the page and anything within the box can pick up the attributes of the box itself. So instead of just saying, okay, anytime you find a paragraph, style it this way, you can set aside a box or two or ten or whatever and make those boxes look different from the rest of the page. The class styles are something that can actually uh, go across different boxes as well as even across different HTML tags. Class styles are pretty uh, special. Ultimately, however, what we want to do is we want to set our hierarchy so that we go from our largest selections down to our smallest selections. 
Other common settings in our web pages could be a default for what the list items look like, whether they be ordered or unordered, or what our hyperlinks will look like, or what our images will look like. Okay, to get into the heart and soul of this week's understanding is we need to start giving some thought to divs, what they are and how they're used. Divs or divisions are basically boxes that can have a width, height, padding, margins, backgrounds. Within that box you can nest other divs, you can set font types, you can font set uh, color types, etc. Years ago we used to create tables and then to get creative we would nest tables inside of tables. In this particular case when we're talking about divs we can nest divs within other divs. Divs can be positioned or floated left or right and placed anywhere on the page. A div is basically composed of the content, a border, padding, and margin. All of these things can have any kind of um, size values that we want. But just to show you here, taking a look, we start out with our content, and we may start out with a content that is 200 pixels wide or tall. And then we can have a border around that. I'm going to go ahead and put a border around this box here. So we can imagine that there's content in the box and then there is a border that actually oops, counts for something around the box itself. And then from there we would also con give consideration to the padding between the content itself and the outer edge of that particular box. And then last, we need to know that we can actually buffer this box away from other boxes by giving it a margin and that margin kind of offsets it from other objects and just as I've already spoken all of these objects can have a, uh, a background of their own so that we can get very creative now moving forward into the div math this is what gets odd oftentimes when we're trying to plan how divs work out we want to know the size of the box. Well, we may create a box that has 200 pixels wide. However, the reality is is that we need to consider the entire box and understand that even though we've defined a box that's only 200 pixels wide, the footprint or the amount of space that it takes up on the page is actually much larger. And that's because, for example, here if I wanted to calculate the width, if I had said that my content was 200 pixels wide, that would be fine. But then the next thing I would need to give thought to is padding. Perhaps I have a padding of 10 pixels, but I have a padding of 10 pixels on both the left and the right side of that content. In addition to that, I've got a border sitting on the, both the left and the right side of that content. And then finally, I've got a margin that sets up on both the left and right side of that particular content. So while the box itself may be defined as 200 pixels, to truly understand the entire footprint of the entire element, I would need to add all of these values up to get, get a width. Similar, I would have to add all of those values up to get a height. Okay, in the next section I'm going to take you into Dreamweaver and we're going to take a look at a couple of different um, practical applications of this information as well as your work assignment for this week.